Hi, and welcome to your first Xcode programming tutorial for iOS. Now, I'm going to begin today by explaining to you how you program for iOS, what languages you use, what a programming language even is. So, let's start the basics by visiting the Apple Developer website and going on to the iOS Development Center. Now, you, if you want to publish your apps or test an app that you've created on a device, you are going to need to register, but you need to enroll in the iOS Development Program, not just the free registration, which does cost $99 a year. I've got it. It's well worth it. It's really good. Um. So I'd recommend doing that and assuming, uh, don't do it straight away, so if you like the development process, and if you do then um, go ahead and enroll. Okay, so we don't need to worry too much about this. This is a great place to find information, sample code, anything like that really you can find on the Apple Developer website. So maybe check it out after this tutorial, see if you find anything interesting. Okay. Let, let's start programming. Um, you're going to need to get a program called Xcode, which is a compiler. So the compiler pretty much turns the code you type into binary ones and zeros so the iPhone can actually read it. So you can get Xcode from the App Store for free or from the developer website. I just go into the App Store. You just look up Xcode. It's this one here. <laughs> really good compiler. I really like it. That's one of my favorite things about programming for iOS. And it's really simple to use, it, and it's free, so you know, get it if you really hate it. That's that. I'll include a link in the description, so you can just click on that even. Okay, once you've got Xcode, go ahead and open it up, and you're just create a new Xcode project. Okay, let me go run through what these options mean, what they are. Master details if you've got an iPad app. It comes up with the bar on the side, if you watch where my cursor is, a table view bar on the side, and then a big main area window on the right hand side. And you can sort of get it, what it looks like from this icon here. OpenGL game, if you're developing a game, which we're not going to be doing in any of the tutorials, we're not going to be developing an OpenGL game. And you tend not to use this template anyway. If you were developing a game, you'd use something called Cocos 2D. Or you'd use a different um, game engine such as Unity. So you don't need to worry about that. And you probably won't use this one too much. Page-based applications. If you imagine iBooks, you've got that page turn. It pretty much does that. It creates a page turn. And so it's good for... Maybe a calendar, an e-book that's an app as well. So maybe an app where you can read an e-book and find out, watch videos and that sort of thing. Single view is what we'll use a lot. That's just plain view, nothing set up already. It's just a view. And that's a good place to start. Don't start with empty application if you want to. Um, if you just want an empty application, go single view. And then at least the program set up. So empty application, no PGL, you don't need to worry about. Utility just has pretty much the same single view except there's two screens and there's a button that links you from one to the other. But you can do that really easily within the app and it means you've got a more basic starting point which is always good. So you can use Utility if you've got just two screens like a main screen and then an info screen or something. That's what it's good for. But if you've got three or four screens just start with a single view and add the views which is really easy and I'll show you that in our next tutorial. Tabbed application, it's got a tab bar down the bottom. You see them on all the apps, on the app store, on everything pretty much. So today we're just going to look at the single view. I'm just going to give you an introduction to Xcode. And so here you're going to, this this will be empty when you first load Xcode. So you just put in a company name. If you don't, This doesn't have to be a registered company. This is just, you need to look, watch the bundle identifier. So let's just put in app dev. And then the product name, let's just call this test, oh, and camel case, test, oh, hang on, just do test of Xcode. And as you can see, I've capitalised the start of every word. Don't put, this is for two reasons. One, it makes it clearer, but the main one is you can't put, well, you can, but it mucks it all up if you put spaces in the product name. So don't do that. Instead, just do capital letters at the start of each word. And you'll do this even in the code when you create a variable of sorts. You'll also be 
and you'll also be using Campbell case, except the difference will be the first letter. Here it's capitalized because it's the product name, but in a variable you're going to have it in a lower case. Leave the class prefix the devices. I always start with universal, but it's up to you. Today, to make it, to keep it simple, let's just go for iPhone. Don't worry about these two boxes here. Storyboards. I don't like them for a few reasons. One, they're quite complex. And two, they require iOS 5 or higher, so it gets rid of a lot of compatibility. I prefer just to have a view for each screen and then link the views together rather than have one screen that shows all the views and that you have to then set up, which is really complex and it changes the code around a bit. So we're not going to be using that. So I'm just going to, and then choose where you want to save it, pretty much. And untick this, you don't need a local Git repository, unless you plan on maybe uploading it to the internet or something, but we're not going to. And I won't be publishing the source code of this app because it's just not really an app that we're doing today, it's more me showing you what, how, how you would create an app. So let me go through everything here. This is the summary of the app here. So you tend not, you tend to only have one orientation because it's quite complex to set up other ones. Set up other ones. So I just tend to do portrait. Now the reason when you loaded it upside down was unselected is Apple actually don't like you selecting upside down because it means if someone receives a phone call. They're going to have to turn their phone the other way. And you'll see if you try it, on a, I think music's the only one that doesn't do it. But if you go into your iPhone, you're going to see that if you turn it upside down, it's not going to make any difference. On an iPad it will, because an iPad, there's no phone call capabilities. But on an iPhone, it won't. So I, I do portrait and upside down. But as I said, that's the reason that it wasn't selected at the start. And for all our apps, I'm just going to assume you've already set this up, so make sure you do, because I won't be going through this every time. Status bar, that's the, let me open up iOS Simulator and I'll explain to you what it all is. Right. Why not? Okay. To test the project, we're going to choose what device you want to test it on. To test it on an iOS device, you do need to be enrolled in the developer program for $99 a year. And then you got to download certificates and everything, which I'll show you in one of our last tutorials. <clears throat> I'm going to test it on the iPhone simulator because it's an iPhone project. If I test it on an iPad, it will just come up with those times two buttons like you used to see in apps in the early days of the iPad. iOS simulator automatically installs when you install Xcode. In fact, I might even be wrong. It might just come with a line. So at the moment, that's our app. It's just a blank screen. But the status bar is here. You can see this is the status bar. So when you select thing, uh, tint color, you're just changing the color when this loads up here, which I quite like to do. I think it looks quite good. But you don't have to. And you can even hide during application launch. During the launch, you don't even have to set up the loading screen. You just put in the images you want while it's loading, and then Apple will do the rest. So it's really easy. You need three images. You need a retina one. And if you hover over, you'll get the sizes. You need... Uh, Retina iPhone 5, Retina iPhone 4 4S, and then everything below that. So 3GS, 3, all that. Libraries. So if you want to use a video, you want to use Maps, you need to import libraries. And libraries are pretty much it's complex. And I, I won't explain it now until we need it, which will be in about tutorial 5 when I cover videos. And there's hundreds of them, and you'll need them for Twitter, you'll need them for playing videos, to access the address book, to use core Bluetooth or core data or core audio even. Uh, so there's a lot there. And uh, you can even download from the internet. If you download an SDK, you'll go add other and then you'll select the library. Info, don't fiddle around with this. You don't really need to fiddle around with info or build settings until you're testing on a device or getting it ready to submit to Apple to publish on the App Store. Build phase is the same thing. This is where another place where you can access the libraries and all the compile sources and everything. You, again, don't need to touch that unless you're adding the libraries, which you can do in summary. Build rules, you don't touch that because you will probably end up stuffing it up. I mean, there's no need. I don't think I've ever needed to 
Unless you need to add a build rule, which is just so rare that, you know, they may as well get rid of that tab. Validate settings. If you download a project from the internet, so say I publish the source code and you're, not, and you're watching this video three years in the future, you'll probably need to validate the settings to bring it up to date. Version, that really only matters if you're publishing to the App Store. And time with deployment target. I like to put deployment target to 4.3 because it means if they've deprecated some code, meaning they no longer read some of the code, then it won't matter if it's in 4.3 usually, unless they deprecated it in like 3.0, which is rare. And the other reason 4.3 is good is it'll run on most devices because most people have at least 4.3 minimum. Okay. App delegates, that, that's pretty much loading the app. That's not much important there. Unless you get a tab bar application, maybe then you'll maybe use it, but you usually won't use anything in the app delegate. You will use a view controller. So view controller is off screen. And these are the two files. .h will declare things like objects and maybe a variable, a universal one, a global one. You might import the frameworks that you've installed in the summary. So there's a few things you'll do there. And then in the .m file, you're going to have all your main code. And so you might, if you're switching screens, you might declare the method that switches the screens in the .h. And then you'll probably then write the method in the .m. And then you'll link it to a button in the .xib. You actually pronounce it .nib, not .xib, but it's called a .xib. Um, here's the objects here. Let me put it into this. And you can see these are all the objects that you can put into your app easily. Like there's segmented controls, so you've probably seen them. And there's a whole lot of different types. You could have a bar one. Then you can change all the colors and change a lot of the properties there. And then there's the button. And you can double click just to change the text. And change the background and everything. And you can fiddle around with that. Like you don't really need to watch a tutorial on how to do that. That's all just a bit of fiddling which I'm sure you'll all be able to do. Background there is actually not going to change this back, the blue, it's going to add a background. But you can change like on the tint what the background colour would be, which is kind of fun to do. The user interface is a big part of it. And if you do ever submit an app to Apple, they actually review the app. You, they don't, it doesn't just get published. And they're really strict, like if you don't have enough content, if it's messy, if it doesn't work properly, they won't accept the app and you'll have to redo it. So the user interface is really important to them. So as you'll see, when I try and add this into the view, I'll get guidelines, and you do need to follow them. So if you don't put it a bit on, if you want it to be in the middle, don't put it like there. Wait till you get that blue line. And then these lines here are constraints, meaning that they were recently introduced, and it's pretty much for, this is an iPhone 5 screen that I'm designing here, but if it's an iPhone 4, this will make it so that it's all set up almost the same on an iPhone 4 screen. The constraints are quite complex. I'll get into more detail on them in tutorial 3, I think I'll do. And that just pretty much sets it all up so it runs smoothly on an iPhone 5, an iPhone 4, an iPad mini, an iPad, real iPad, all of that sort of thing. Okay, so once you have a property, to create a method for it, so say I've got a button and I want to, when the button's clicked, change something. I'm going to open up a twin editor, which doesn't work well on a smaller screen. I'm running this on a 13-inch MacBook. But just scroll around until you see the button. And then what you need to do is you need to right-click on the button, then holding down on the button, drag it into the .h file. And then I'm going to create not an outlet but an action. And let's put this action button pressed. And so there's the action. I like to do this, which is to insert a curly bracket, press enter, and it'll insert the other one for you, and then have all my outlets or objects. So say I wanted to hide the button, I need to have an outlet, so let's do that. Uh, and I can get rid of that, you don't need the on safe return. So I could have, when the button's pressed, it hides the object, which you do in the .m, and I'll have tutorials for all of that coming up, but that just gives you an idea of how it works. Then if I went into the .m now, you'd see that it's automatically inserted the button press method and I'd put all the code in here for when the button's pressed. And it's that simple really. 
and I'll show you what code you'll put in in the next few tutorials. So keep watching and hopefully by the end you'll be able to create a really advanced app and hopefully get one on the App Store. So look forward to the next tutorial and I hope you enjoyed this one.